Hello, everyone. Pastor Harris, and welcome to TCC Online. Today is Father's Day 2024, and what a year it's been. Welcome, and we're so glad that you joined us. And I believe that this word that God has placed in my spirit to share will be a blessing to you. The title is Mighty Man of Valor. And we're going to spend our time here in uh, the Old Testament, beginning with the book of Joshua and verse, or excuse me, chapter, no, chapter 6 and Verse 11, and it states, and there came an angel of the Lord. Whenever you, you read, and there came, or behold, the angel of the Lord, you know something's getting ready to go down. <laughs> so here in the Joshua 6, verse 11, it starts out, there came an angel of the Lord. And <clears throat> this angel showed up to talk to a young man by the name of Gideon. And Gideon was stealing wheat. <laughs> and we'll get into that. Uh, verse 12 states, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. All right, so Pastor Harris, what the heck is going on? You mentioned stealing wheat. Okay, <laughs> the children of Israel have been taken captive, and to get everything we can give you out of this set of scripture and what happened in Genesis, Father's Day, this is for the men. And of course, the women can apply it too, but this is for the men. Uh, we we got to set the stage the little history of what was going on. The children of Israel have been taken captive by the, the Mennonites and the Amorites, okay? Conquered, they, they, they lost the battles. They are in captivity, all right? They are living in caves, dens, side of mountains. It is bad. Gideon here is stealing wheat. It would be equivalent to one of us going into a grocery store and, 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 and stealing some Wheaties. Okay. <laughs> now, how bad can it be? You got to sneak into a store and, and steal some Wheaties so that you can eat. This is how bad it is now for Gideon and the children of Israel. So with all that said, I want to read what the angel said once again. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto Gideon, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Now what I first want to show you is the absolute conflict between the state of Gideon's life and what the angel said. Gideon is poor. They're captured. They're living in dens, side of mountains, caves. There's no leadership. The children of Israel are prisoners, okay, by the, the Midianites and the Amorites, all right? There is no hope. There is no light at the end of the tunnel. Everything physically, again, they're living in caves. Their homes are gone. All right? Dens, caves. No home. Okay? And they are so poor. He's stealing. He's sneaking in into the, the uh, Mennonites, and he's stealing wheat from them, sneaking around. I can't get some food. Okay. Here's some food. Over. He, he's... He just snuck in into Safeway and got him some Wheaties and uh, took out through the side door. All right, booked him, run it with, with the two boxes of Wheaties. So this is really, really bad. The angel 
of the Lord shows up and recognize that the angel is not dumb. The angel is not stupid. The angel knows everything that I just stated, how bad things are. Okay? And what does the angel say? Gideon, the Lord is with thee. Stop. He is. <laughs> That's what I would have said. The Lord is with me. Harry would have said, okay, um, you understand I got a box of Wheaties here that I just, just stole. All right. I'm poor. We got no money. We're, we're, we're trying to scratch out a living on rocks. We're in caves. We got no home. And you're going to tell me that the Lord is with me? See, that doesn't make sense, does it? And we're going to dive deeper into that. His next statement is, Gideon, you are a mighty man of valor. Oh, my God. That's an OMG in capital letters. Reality and what God says. Reality of my physical condition and how God sees me. Father's Day, men, are, are, are you hearing me today? This is, this is, you, you, you can't get any more drastic of a difference of a, there's a conflict here. God says this, ah, and he, man, I'm, I'm down and out. I got nothing going. But yet, this is the statement that God says about me. All right. What can you grab hold of? Your reality, you're holding that, you're living that, that's day to day. Okay. But at the same time, as you live in a real physical, emotional uh, uh, world here, can you add to it what God says? All right. Can you bring God's word into your life and believe it and respond and act on it? And maybe it's, it's, it's at the top. Can you think? Can you think God's word in the midst of absolute, absolutely horrific conditions? Wow. So, this is what the angel says to Gideon. Now, Gideon's got some choices, doesn't he? Well, can I believe God? Or do I get confused? What, what the heck? How can God say this? Okay. God has knowledge of how he made you, who you are, how he has equipped you. Okay. And believe it or not, people, God knows you better than you know yourself. Okay? And I, I'm so glad because I really know me. I've taken the time over the years to get to know me. But I, I am so blessed that God even knows me <laughs> better than I do, which then allows him to do things on my behalf. And can you say amen, 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 amen? Okay. <clears throat> So the scene is set, the angel shows up, tells Gideon he's a mighty man of valor. This is how the Lord sees him. Gideon is looking at his physical conditions going, this is crazy. All right, let's move to the next scripture. Okay, verse 14, it states, And the Lord looked upon Gideon and said, Go, in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites, have not I sent thee. Okay. So the angel says to, to him, you're going to save Israel. All right. And you're going to deliver them from the enemy. And that's all good. Okay. That's big picture. 
But what I want to dive into, because that's really easy. Okay, Gideon, this is what I'm sending you. God is with you. And, and okay, I got it. But there is a nugget here that is gigantic. It says, go in this thy might. All right. What is the angel saying? What is God communicating through the angel to Gideon? He's saying, you're a mighty man of valor. Okay, go in thy might. You're equipped. You are ready. You can do this. Can somebody say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? You can get this done. And you're a winner and not a loser. You're the first and not last. You're the head and not the tail. This is how God sees you. Okay, go in the strength of your might. It's time to dig down within you, knowing how God has made you more than a conqueror, that you can do this, you can get it done. This is what the angel is saying. Go in the strength of your own might. Wow, what a statement. Now remember, the physical conditions and the mental and emotional state that Gideon and his entire family and nation is in. But yet in the midst of that, the angel was saying, buck up, pull it up. You can get this done. You are strong. You are mighty in the Lord. Okay, come on now. It's time to rally. Let's go. Pull it up in the strength of your own might. Uh, I, I recall lots of experience, but uh, one of them, it, it goes way back, and I, I never shared this before. I'm 12 years old, okay, and love the Lord, Christian young boy, 12 years old. And we are... Uh, in the state championship, uh, Columbia Little League from Vancouver, Washington. Vancouver is basically a suburb of, of, of Columbia. <laughs> okay. And we all star team, and we're doing good. We we cleaned up our, you know, the local districts, regionals, etc. So now it's state championship. And there's teams, those of you here in Washington, there's teams from Yakima and Tri-Cities and Spokane and Bellevue. So any, anyway, state the best of the best from around the state. All the teams, I think there's like eight teams there. Okay. Vancouver has the only Negroes, okay, only colored kids. All right, there was three of us on our all-star team. All the other teams were 100% white. All right, so think about the fans, think about the parents, and understand this is 1966. <laughs> okay, and names are being called. All right, it is the hostile environment. All right, and the, the, the nicest name that we were called then was Colored, the Colored Boys. And when we got to the park, you could begin, oh, Vancouver, they got some colored kids. <laughs> hey, colored kids are coming in here. Wow. And people are looking at us like they've never seen colored people before. And so on our, on our team, I bat at fourth. And if you know baseball, you know fourth is the cleanup spot. And one of the other colored kids, he batted third. So we were three and four in the lineup. Then our, the, the third one, he, he didn't play. He was only 11 years old, and he was very young. So anyway, with all the verbal stuff, all the mental and emotional stuff going on, and 
those of you that have been in big crowds and situations, you know how the people can affect the entire environment that you're in. I mean, it becomes tangible. You can feel it. And the pressure was on. And it, it, it reached a climax each time me or the other Negro came to bat. I mean, you could feel it. And you, the, you, you, there were verbal things like, that color kid can't hit. That color kid is, is inferior to us. It, it was something else. But I was there. Of course, I love the Lord. But I understand what the angel is saying to Gideon. You rise up in the power of your might. You know how to hit that ball. You've been playing baseball. You know what to do. You know how to hit the curve ball, the drop ball, the fastball. You can do it. Oh, yes. And so for me, it wasn't, oh, I'm going to crumble because all the negativity and the people and the... Mm -mm. For me, it was, I'm going to show these folks what we can do. Shoot. And I did not make a out in the entire tournament. I either walked or got a hit every time up. I wound up going something like 12 for 12. And in the championship game, I hit a three-run home run, power alley, right center, and we won the championship game five to three. Columbia Little League, Vancouver, Washington, 1966, state champions with colored kids. Okay. Wow. So how did it happen? We just we pulled up who who and what, how God made us. We can do this. I'm trained. I'm developed. I know how to hit the ball. Okay. And who cares all the noise? When I get in that batter's box, it's me and that pitcher. And whatever he throws, I got my technique down. Oh, shoot. Are you hearing me? And so this is how, as fathers, we deal with life and its problems. You're equipped. So what? It's noisy out there. God has made you in his image and in his likeness, and you can handle whatever comes into your life. You can do it. You can deal with it. And if, if you, you know, think about it, and man, you're going down. Remember a 12-year-old kid from Vancouver, colored kids, <laughs> Negroes. Other folks, they, uh, guys were black, and back then they had these iron skillets, and they were black with people fighting. Walking the ball for, hey, skillet, skillet head. I mean, nay, it, it was nuts. But yet in that batter's box, we dealt and we showed. We set that place on fire with our play. We won it all, and we silenced a whole bunch of mouths. Okay, and my parents, they were so proud. Clarence Harris and Thelma G, they were so proud. Now remember, all, what, thousand people up there, five, however many, a lot of folks that were there, they're all white. My parents, two black parents, the other kid, one of the kids' parents didn't come, so there was four. African American parents in the States. What an environment. And my mom and dad, they stood proud. And of course, the other parents on our team, they were grabbing my mom and dad. Tell me I knew Terry could do it. We knew he could do it. That's why he's batting fourth. <laughs> you know, he clean up man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Get my parents proud. And and so the angel says to Gideon, go in this, your own mind, 
who you are. Okay, go in your mind. And so I need you to grab hold of that. New Testament, it would be, I can do all things through, through Christ who strengthens me. All right, New Testament would be Paul telling us, you are equipped. Okay. All right. So, and, and, and Jesus, as he says, with God, all things are possible. Man, pick your head up. <laughs> all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right. So that's, that's where we are at. So Gideon gets the message. And I want to move now to verses 15 and 16. Gideon responds. He says, Gideon says unto the angel, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor. We talked about that in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Okay. So God comes back, because Gideon is still saying, Look at my physical condition. How can I wipe out an entire army? And what does, what, what does God, Jesus, he, he reaffirms? He says, surely I will be with thee. And you're going to smite these guys. Let's go. Let's go. And, I, and, and that I need you to understand that the Lord will never forsake you. He'll never leave you. He's with you. Okay. You look around and your physical conditions are bad. Gideon's physical conditions are bad, mentally and emotionally, again. You now he's stealing just to eat. And, and you gotta eat some dry queenies, don't you got no milk? Okay, so <laughs> things are rough. And but God says, I'm with you. Okay, let's go. Let's let's do this thing. We're we're gonna conquer these guys, and the nation of Israel is going to be free. All right, so this is how we need to take a look at, at life itself and your situation. Uh, some of you already know that Gideon went out, they organized, and of course they got the victory. Uh, they went down to only 300, Gideon and the mighty 300, and they surrounded the, uh, the forces of, of the Midianites, and they went in with uh, lanterns and torches. And one of the things that was really, really cool that shows the progress of Gideon and the respect that those 300 have for him. When they attacked, they shouted, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Okay, the sword of the Lord. Everybody knows that, okay, the Lord's, but and of Gideon. And I've always believed that God put that in there in, and in the hearts of those men to say that so that we all know we have personal responsibility here and the sword of Gideon. Gideon had to do his part. Gideon had to be mentally strong. Gideon had to be mentally tough. Gideon had to bring forth the energy. Gideon had to step up and lead. Gideon needed to use what God had put in him, in the power of his might, to lead the charge and get this thing done. Gideon needed to be bold, needed to be aggressive, needed to have the swagger, to go in there and take those folks out. Okay, the part that Gideon played. All right, and it's no, it, it's no different than the baseball game or those oh, five or six, how many games, four games, five games, because we were in the winner's bracket and we cleaned up. But I had to 
use my talent, use my skill, have the swagger, block out the noise, and we're going to deal with these guys. Shoot. We're going to take care of this. I had to bring all that positive energy and everything to White Center Baseball Park in Seattle, Washington. All right. So, in the sword of the Lord and the, and the sword of Gideon. Okay. They whoop him, and Gideon then becomes the head of Israel. Now, back in, in Genesis, I, I want to tie this in with another scripture that I want to give to you. Because Gideon, he used this. And I want to share it with you. And this is this is talking about why that angel said to him, go in the power of thy might. Okay, so check this out. Uh, the book of Genesis in the 11th chapter. And it gives you a little bit of insight into God and his knowledge of how he made man. And then it ties in with what that is. You go in the power of your mind. All right, Genesis 11, 6. A lot of, a lot of folks miss this. I mean, Genesis is a huge book, with lots of information. I mean, Genesis has 50 chapters, okay? Now, check this out. It says, <clears throat> Genesis 11, 6, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. These are the folks, and they're getting ready to build the Tower of Babel. Okay. And I, I want you to recognize as this is a conversation, this is Jesus and some angels, they're talking, and they go, hmm, we, we got to handle this because whatever man imagines, man can do. This is the Lord making this statement about us. Well, Pastor Terry, how can he say that? He can say it because they made us. And they understand the power of our mind. The human spirit is, woo! The human spirit is something. Well, what do you mean? The very first time, this long, 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 long time ago, when I flew into Las Vegas, and I was blown away with the structures, the architect, the buildings, the gigantic casinos, hotels, and of course being deep into the lore, this scripture jumped out at me when I got to Vegas. I said, oh my goodness, this is just what he was talking about, the human spirit the imagination, the mind, how God has equipped man. Vegas is laid out. Wow. And guess what? It all came from imagination. People sitting down, thinking, scratching it out, running up. It's, it's, it's no different. And again, it was all over my mind when, way back when we bought uh, a Safeway store, and I sat down with the architect, and I said, here's what I imagined. <laughs> and we did the whole thing, and it was built. When we purchased the vacant lot, Winner's Gym, I sat down with the same architect, and I, you know what I said? Here's what I imagined. And everything I imagined, it got built. The weight room, the balcony, overlooking, watching the kids play. The power of the imagination. The power of our mind. The power of the human spirit. Okay, and men, you have this. 
to be successful fathers, whatever job, career, whatever you're doing, you can do it good. <laughs> you can do it well. You can be successful because that's how you are made. And then it's time to blow the top off. You bring in the knowledge of Scripture mixed in with how God made you. You bring in the power of the Holy Ghost and mix that in with how God made you. You bring in the power of your prayer closet and mix that in with how God made you. Shoot. Success is yours. Success is so, you, you, you bring in this scripture, and you then recognize why the angel said to Gideon what he did. Go forth in the power of your might. Your might, Gideon. And then just the, the, the cherry on the top, when God had the men to yell, the sword of Gideon. Wow. And how that had to make him feel as they're running and charging into the camp of the enemy to hear 300 men shout, the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right, brothers, I hope you enjoyed this today. And uh, enjoy your day. And what a time it is to be a Christian man living here on this earth with all that God has done for us, with all that God continues to do in the marvelous way that he made us. Man, and the fact that Jesus Christ himself, and, and I got a real vivid imagination. Jesus looking back, at Adam and Eve, the creation of men. And then coming down and, and seeing all these folks as they're, you know, they're, they want to build this tower. Jesus remembering going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can get this thing done. He tells the angels, I know they can do it because I know how I made them. <laughs> and whatever these jokers think of, they can do they can do it. I know they can. Because me and the Father put it in them. They can do this thing. And whenever I, I, I go into a, a new city, especially when I was traveling a lot, I always look at the architect. I look at the buildings. And I always went back to uh, Genesis 11.6, the imagination of How God made man. Okay. Fathers, dads, brothers, and wives, and, and single women, single men, everybody, Christians, take this message and apply it. Because as you heard, there's something in here for everyone. All right. Be blessed and enjoy your day.